Hey everyone, you're tuned into InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy. Join us as we talk about anything and everything. All the stuff that makes life interesting. So let's get to it. Hey everybody and welcome to InfoQuench. I'm your host Jeff. And I'm Amy and this episode is all about kitchen tips. Kitchen tips. We actually got this idea from great friends of ours. You know, it's pandemic time so we were Zooming with them and they came up with ideas for us to share. Not, you know, not all the ideas came from them. Some of them were going to come from me. Uh, yes, all the thorough research <laughs> Jeff did for this episode. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, there are a lot of tips that you can Google online, but it's always great to know the tried and true ones that mm-hmm. you're tried and true. <laughs> friends. Tried, tried and true tips tried that and your true. friends I, can We all knew for. what you meant. We all knew. So just giving some credit up front to Jody, Janelle, Andre. Yes. And happy birthday, Andre. And Mel and Andrew. Yes. Uh, so lots of great tips and let's just get started. I, I have to start with, I, I had researched uh, some kitchen tips and this one was really funny that came up in Google. It was to put your potatoes in the dishwasher. Why would you put the potatoes in the dishwasher? Well, it, to save yourself from hand washing them, you oh. put them in the, not with soap, but you run them through your dishwasher with just plain water and... Conserving water? <laughs> I know, it's a horrible you don't watch. thing. Don't I mean, I bet, you, I bet you some people actually do that. It probably makes them easier to peel, for one. Uh, yeah, well, or maybe it's for up. new potatoes. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. You mm-hmm. know, it's... Anyway, I just thought that was a funny one to share, so... There's there's probably billions of... Well, not billions, but a lot of kitchen tips, you know? I'm and gonna, how many do we come up with? Like, at least a dozen? I know better dozen? than to number my lists. Yeah, that's true, because... <laughs> yeah. Because you'll mess know. up my numbering. Oh, yeah. We learned that from many, many other episodes. Mm -hmm. One of the mind-blowing tips that I got from our friends was around grains and how to store them. Oh, yeah. So we talked a little bit about how to avoid wasting food. And I think probably everybody can relate to uh, cooking too much spaghetti. Oh, yes. I know this has happened to me a lot of times. Like, for whatever reason, I just can never accurately measure the spaghetti. And I think with grains, we tend to think they're... They're usually the least expensive ingredient, so you yep. err on the side of caution and cook too much. But the tip on this one is that if you do do that, you can save them and really just, it's super simple, put them in a Tupperware container, throw them in your freezer. So if you've got some cooked spaghetti, yeah, just toss it in a Tupperware container, put it in your freezer, and then when you're ready to use it, you boil water, throw, it, throw it into it the in. boiling water for literally just a few seconds until... Uh, thaws out and it's ready to go. We should do that anyway, really. I mean, that's such a quick meal, you know, especially for the little guy. You when mean pre-cook all the spaghetti and then spaghetti freeze it on purpose? And just freeze it on purpose. Some Maybe. Of, it some, sounds some, like a lot of extra of work. I, I will, I, there's, there is one tip that I thought about, uh, it, you know, after the fact, after our big Zoom conversation. I should have shared this one and I discovered it by accident. But, I, you know, if you take green onions... Uh, and you put them in like those little produce bags, the, the produce bags, it, they'll last twice as long if you leave them in your crisper in the, in the uh, produce bags, as opposed to just out without in no bag. Right. You know? Well, you can even store them in a glass of water on your counter and they'll continue to grow. That's true. You can do that with garlic as well. Well, I don't know about water, but you just leave garlic in a dark, dry place and it'll just sprout. A great one I saw circulating on social media just this past week was around avocados. Avocados. And I love avocado toast. They're it's, such a crapshoot, though. Well, they are. They are. They're here, anyways. They they go from being not ripe to, you know, rotten within. You get about thirty seconds of thirty good, seconds. Good delay. avocado time to make use of them. Yeah. But uh, I lo- I love avocado toast, but often a full avocado is just too much to to use in one sitting. Absolutely, yeah. And and so the idea is just you store it in water. So you put it in your fridge, put it in a bowl of water. So if you have, a, you know, you cut it in two, you use the half, mm-hmm. put the other half underwater. And because it's submerged underwater and the oxygen's not getting to it, it doesn't brown. It doesn't make fresh. it just ridiculously mushy. I guess it's usually mushy anyway. Once well, you I mean, eat full it. disclosure, I haven't tried this tip yet. I saw uh, it, but I mean, it was on social media, so it's got to be true. Do you have any? I think there was a meme and everything to go with it. Do you have any tips for um, natural peanut butter? 
anybody who's looking how to <laughs> looking looking wondering how to not mix up peanut butter, uh, check out our Instagram account and uh, the story highlights. There's a nice little one of me attempting to mix natural peanut butter. This was a great tip. I thought, yeah, it was really to take a, a probably. I guess if you had a submersion, I remember mixer, that day it would work. Uh, but we, we used live a, in infamy. a handheld beater. So we had hand, or sorry, handheld Those mixers. Those old school ones from yeah, like the yeah, with the 60s. double beaters, the ones you used to lick. Yep. You unplugged first, <laughs> and then you'd yeah, you the beg for them as kids. Oh, that was th- those are the best. Yeah, those are the Frostings. best. Frostings, but the the tip of the natural peanut butter was to you take out one of the beaters, so you just have one left, so you can fit it into the jar, and use it to mix up the peanut butter. But an essential component of the process is to hold <laughs> on to the jar. Yeah, um, you don't want to. Which you'll discover if you check out the Instagram story in our highlights. It's pretty, shall we say, messy. There's nothing messier than natural peanut butter sprayed around your kitchen. Like you're not human if you if you watch that film or watch watch that film, <laughs> watch that video and not laugh. I know. I wish we had captured it a little more accurately. A bit of it's a blur, but you can hear our reaction. And then the worst. I was a camera person, so you can hear. I ran. You can hear Jeff. I saying, retreated. I thought you. Why weren't you holding? The I can't jar? believe you weren't holding it. Is what because I, peanut butter is <laughs> so thick. Obviously, the whole jar started to spin. But the worst part was, is we. I. I'm like, this is what it's got to work. I've read about it on the internet. You it's read gotta about work. it. So we made a second attempt, and although the second time around, I I remembered to hold onto the jar. Mm-hmm. It was already slippery with oil from the previous attempt from, that from the previous failed attempt failed attempt so then it flew out again and it was yeah it was a bad scene it was like someone had sprayed our kitchen with fecal matter it was really bad <laughs> it was yeah it's like uh, two hours later it was so uh, it we're... was funny though and that was hilarious. And, and we still tell the story so it was worth it that it happened messy stories are the best stories yeah and we were telling the story to our friends and they gave us some great tips around natural peanut butter one of them is to store it upside down yeah, uh, you know because Just, the you tried oil, that one too, though. I do, I, I do, and, do and that. does it work? Yes, it separates it. Well, I tend to try to buy the stirred. Well, when you go to the grocery store, I try to remember to put on the grocery list to buy the the stirred natural right. almond butter or peanut butter. But um, if you store it upside down, the oil will naturally migrate to the highest point. So then, when yeah. you flip it back over, it's at the bottom. It just makes it easier to stir. And then an added tip would be to put a piece of paper towel or something underneath if you're going to store it that way, particularly after it's open, just because it, regardless of how tight you think you have that cap on, it may still seep a little bit of the, uh, on a completely unrelated yet related, uh, comment, like (laughs) related and unrelated. Yeah. Why eat? What, what's the difference between, I, I, I seriously don't know. Like what is like, is it less fat? Is it No, no, it's not that. It just doesn't have all the preservatives in it. Oh, no. So it goes bad. It's well, it It'll you, go you, bad. you have to store it in the fridge, right. whereas the other peanut butter you don't have to. Right. What about it makes it so that you have to store it in the fridge? It doesn't have any preservatives in it. Yes, but we've covered that. Yes, no, I I realize <laughs> that, but what what preservatives are in peanut butter that make it so that I don't you... know the exact thirty syllable chemical names for but all I'm, the preservatives. But I guess I'm just confused as to like. Who cares? Like, who cares if there's preservatives in peanut butter or not? Well, it's like not? anything. If you eat something that's natural, it's better for you. You know, it just it's not good to throw a bunch of so all preservatives extra are bad in your for system. you. Well, I I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to do a little bit more research. I mean, there's on natural that because... ways to preserve things with salt and such, but that's yeah. not what this episode is about. No, it's not. I'm just I, nor am I an expert. My in curious mind of... is just running wild now about you know. The but differences. The thing about natural peanut butter is usually 100% peanuts. I think okay. with any kind of food, it's the more you can get whole food and not a bunch of additives that you don't really know what the origin is, whether it's a carcinogen. Gotcha. It's always a better choice. Even if it does go bad quicker. That's right. Because there's no preservative. Okay, go ahead. Well, right. You should recognize all the ingredients on the food that you're eating. Yeah, we don't do that with other food, though. We don't eat other food that has no preservatives. We apples. Don't, apples don't have preservatives. We don't eat cheese that has no preservatives. Because How do we you don't, know? We don't mind that. It, well, we just don't. What about we, that feta we, cheese we have in our fridge with the brine? <laughs> that's just annoying to use. Well, I bet you it doesn't have a lot of preservatives. You're never going to eat that, are you? No. So we should just chuck it. It's too creamy. All right, we're way off topic. Let's go back. We absolutely Let's get are. back. Let's get back. I'm going to go back to a few episodes ago. Well, er, very early on. And mm-hmm. it was around how to address baked on food in your pots or pans. We're, we're experiencing that right now. 
I well, cook, yours is cast iron. You use, yeah, cast I don't know iron. why you insist on using the cast iron it pan. It tastes better, baby. It's so heavy. There's no And then it sits there soaking <laughs> yeah, with whatever. Well, it has to, though. It has to, it has to break it up. Anyways, we're again off topic and I, I'm tired of this evil eye that you're giving me. <laughs> okay. But no, if you have something baked on and it's not a cast iron pan, just a regular old pan, use some salted dishwasher soap and sprinkle it in and just fill it up with hot water and let it sit for a few hours or even right. overnight. And then when you go to wash it the next day or even throw it in your dishwasher. That is a good kitchen tip. It'll, uh, it'll loosen it all up. So you have to use the old... Yeah, we always just keep a box of powdered dishwasher soap expressly for that purpose. You can yes. use it if, you know, a, a burnt on casserole dish, you know, glass dish, you just sprinkle that in, it'll break it down. It's just sort of a super concentrated version of dishwasher soap. I just thought of the simplest kitchen tip that we've shared in a previous podcast, which you will probably tell our listeners which one it was because I don't remember. But it's organizing your kitchen so that things that you put away and get, like, and, you know, to make food is closest to you that's right mm -hmm. well particularly when you're might have been the, the conmari one even when you're emptying the dishwasher it's nice to have things close to where the dishwasher it's just so simple but like if people didn't you know make their like their glassware like you know 12 paces away well that's right it makes sense to have glasses close to the fridge yeah. or if you have your utensils that you use uh on We've your you know literally got it store. set up so that when get dishes are put away which is my job yours is to put them in the dishwasher mine is to put them away that's right and i can put everything away without even taking a step pretty much this is a relationship tip around dishwashers yes. so jeff and i would often well we used to just take turns if there this, were dirty dishes we would all put them in and this then, works well and what would happen is well, Jeff would put them in, and then I'd have to rearrange them because because you hated them, it the way I well, did. Well, you put them in and hap, haphazardly, and it, it, you just couldn't fit as many dishes. And they would be put in in a way that the water jets wouldn't hit them, the, uh, to clean them well. So, long story short, I'm the better dishwasher filler. Jeff's a great putter awayer because you can't. Doesn't can't that make mess sense that part though? Because you 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 do all of the uh, podcast research. You, you know, oh, it you, definitely fits you, our personality type. Yeah. So by doing this, by assigning me as the official loader and, and Jeff is the, the unloader, it's, it's never a discussion. And loader. if there are a bunch of dirty dishes on the counter, Jeff's like, oh, is the dishwasher full of clean dishes? And that's I'm how like, I know. How do you know? The sign that's, is that's there how I with know. the pile of dirty dishes. We actually, we, actually toyed, we actually toyed with the idea of getting like a little, like sort of like a mailbox, a dishwasher mailbox where the, the flag would be yeah. up. Or you could was... just <laughs> open the door and look. That takes a lot of work. Let's take a minute to talk about all those extra buttons on the dishwasher nobody uses nobody uses i've never used anything but normal no. wash i am a normal wash guy normal start mm -hmm. i don't know if anyone else is using them out there if you are let us know on social media because i'd be interested to know what happens i know that there's a sanitizing button which may be good if somebody had you know if they were sick in your family and you want to pass around the illness doesn't it sanitize it anyway yeah in a regular... i don't know i don't know what more it does i also don't know what jet dry does well we don't even know how to self-clean our oven so <laughs> we don't empty our dishwasher fast enough that we need jet dry <laughs> no we just let nature and evaporation take care of it. Well, I mean, there's li literally there are buttons on our stove. We don't know what 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 it does, like on our oven, like you know. Oh, it's true. We've talked. We I don't know how long we've been talking about it, like weeks about self cleaning our oven. I'm terrified and to try because <laughs> it takes I think we like just do it sixteen the hours way. or I know. something, and it locks. It's just a scary prospect. <laughs> I read the instructions. It said there could be open flames in there. Oh, I guess they're God. not open if it's locked shut. But either way, it's yeah. and at the high temperatures, anything high temperature is just scary. It's a scary situation. We don't go any higher than 425. Anyways, what's the next kitchen tip? Well, our, we have a lot of friends who are vegetarians, and they had a lot to say about making homemade hummus. And so. not much to say about cooking chicken wings. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but with hummus, they actually have ways of making it extra fluffy and yes this was jody it, jody and andrew jody and andrew andrew coined the term flummus, flummus. because it is so fluffy mm -hmm. and uh, essentially it's to add some hot and i'm probably going to mess this up but you add a bit of hot water when you're um when but you're, jody before said you're mixing it up jody you said added you've got to boil ice. your he's he suggested you you add ice cubes for a little bit first then you add the hot water. Wait, you add the ice cubes while you're blending the chickpeas? Is that what I'm understanding? No, no. You just put them in to 
cool them off. Oh, oh I see. Then add a little bit of hot water uh, and then blend them, the fluff them and, up. And it just fluffs them right up. Jody also boils them and yeah. peels them. Peels so, each chickpea. Yeah, I don't know, man. Using that is... like the raw chickpeas, you have to boil them for two hours, can 20 minutes, and then he peels them. That's, that's a lot of time. That's dedication. I don't have that kind of commitment. I, To me, I even have a hard time peeling the plastic off the store. I've had his hummus, and it's good. It is good. It's worth the time if you have the dedication to do that. Which gonna, we don't. I'm going to talk about frozen bananas because we use bananas almost every morning in our, uh, as a staple in our smoothies. Yes, and we do. Oftentimes we buy huge bunches of bananas and they get overripe before we can get through the whole bunch and we need to freeze them. And I've noticed that I've uh, a lot of people and when I'm you know creeping out their freezers in their homes, oh. <laughs> they'll throw bananas in with the skins and all into their freezer to store them. Yeah. Um, but you'll also notice that the skins go very brown and it, they're hard to peel when you go to use the banana. Yeah. So what I do you is thaw I thaw them a bit. I just peel the banana before we freeze it. I put it into a Tupperware container. So mm-hmm. peel the bananas. If you got to cut them up a few times to get them to fit into whatever Tupperware you're using. But put them in the Tupperware container, throw them in the freezer, and they don't go brown. And then you can just pull them out and throw them straight in the blender for uh, your smoothie. And then you don't even need to add as much ice. I seem to recall as well you doing research a long time ago about just regular bananas and whether or not they should be refrigerated or not. And you decided... That they should. They they keep longer. That's if right. They're Chiquita thought that they should be. And I've often heard that once you know fruit that is kept on the counter, once it reaches its peak ripeness, you throw it in the fridge to sort of s- slow down the yeah. uh, ripening process, and it it stays at that that level for a little little while longer to make use of. So, I found that interesting. Yeah. Uh, you touched on the chicken wings. Here's here's a tip. If you eat <laughs> a disgusting amount of chicken wings, like Jeff does. <laughs> And they look horrid, particularly to vegetarians, you know but what? to you, anybody. But we have to add a little caveat. They, they aren't just like, you know, superstore, or like, you know, big box store chicken wings. They are, they are free range. They are like properly. They are. They're, they're, well, uh, they're from. There can be some debate around what free range means, but they're from a local farmer. I don't even know what that and means. And so it is supporting local. Yeah. You know, it is. It's, it, it, that that part's not so Locally bad. What's sourced. bad is when you're looking at the raw chicken guts, like yeah. it's the blood, the veins, everything that makes it a living thing. And you open up your freezer. And that's all you see. And that's all you see. And so put those in some opaque bags and hide them. But again, if you have vegetarian friends going into your fridge, it's freezer a good practical ice, joke to play on your vegetarian it's, friends. It's a disgusting I'm joke. Just joking. <laughs> I'm it's just like joking. it's like you murdered something and threw it in your freezer and put it in a clear plastic bag for everybody to look at. <laughs> this one came up in a rather recent episode. If you have a good knife. <laughs> <laughs> not <dodged>. this <laughs> the good knife it's the good knife if you're always saying where's the good knife when you're in the kitchen yeah. can you pass me the good knife just have the good knife just use that good just knife use, why is this your, your, is this your jerry with... seinfeld bit this no. is what it's sounding like no but i mean why have a bunch of extra knives i know if they all suck or they're all just dull and then you're always looking we have for a lot of It makes knives. sense to have, have more like, than one because it could be dirty. But We have one of those blocks where we just use for like everything from like cutting cheese. Like you don't need a chef's knife every time when you want to cut cheese. You just want You mean like, like a cutting board or a butcher's block? No, no. I just mean like the knives. I'm talking about the knives. We have oh, like all those extra block. knives and oh, the stuff. Right, yeah, the one everybody has mm. on, their, on their kitchen counter. Yeah. Yeah, so we use those as utility knives, like just like for cutting whatever, you know. And then like for cutting the good stuff, we use the good knife. <laughs> good you know, stuff. The but good not stuff. when we're eating our crap stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we have the kitchen scissors, which are really just regular scissors that we store in our kitchen. Somehow we went from three pairs of, or maybe even four pairs of scissors in our kitchen to one. I don't know where I they I bet went. you they're all down in the art hole. No, no, I don't think so. I have... Children's scissors down there, pretty much, because I got a bag of them at Value Village a while back. Oh, you bought a bag of scissors, a whole bag. Well, of them? just have just happened to be scissors in them, and crayons and like markers and stuff like that that I use for my art. See, this is we have all these episodes on decluttering, and then you go buy a bag hey, of clutter. The art hole Literally is what the contents the art of hole is junk out drawer. of bounds. The art hole is Jeff's makeshift art studio in our basement. Yeah. 
that is filled with the contents of other people's junk drawers, apparently. That I cleaned for almost two hours today. Well, I, I'll trust you on that. I'm okay. not going down to look. No, you won't. <laughs> this was a, a tip around rice. Now, Jeff actually lived in Korea for a couple of years, teaching English. Yeah, I used South rice Korea, maker, not though. North Korea. They That's how I got hooked in. on rice mares, makers. Right. Well, the tip around this was to rinse your rice before you cook it, which I had never heard of. Yeah, that's that's a general rule. In, for, in Korea? Yeah, yeah. Well, just period for like not minute rice. You don't do it for minute rice, but you do it for like... Basmati or... Yeah, basmati. Jasmine. Or, yeah, long grain. You just, you always, you always... And you really thoroughly wash it too. Like it's not just a rinse. You like... Like scrub every individual no, grain while you're peeling your not chickpeas? Not quite like Jody's chickpeas, no. <laughs> But yeah, you just yeah. So you rinse the rice, and and essentially that's just to remove starch. I guess the same way you rinse pasta after you cook it. But with rice, you rinse it before. And in terms of how much water you need to add, uh, the trick is is you put the rice into your pot. Yeah. And you add water, and you basically just add enough water that covers the rice, and then goes, goes up, up to, to your the first knuckle, first knuckle of your finger. Yep. Yeah. That's right. And that's the exact amount of water you need for, to cook that rice. I always thought it was half-half, but maybe not. You know, Not that, according to Andre. No. And no. he was in Korea with you. He was. So there you go. If you, uh, I mean, you ate a lot of rice there. So that's a major staple. I'm sure they know how to do it right. Absolutely. So I'm not disputing that fact. If you want to separate eggs quickly... I remember having a special egg separator in our drawer when I was a kid. Like it was a little plastic cup device that you would you'd break the egg into and it would separate out the yolk from the white. I know, I know, I can picture it. I know what it looks like. Yes. Was it yellow? Yellow. It yeah. was yellow. Yeah, I knew it was yellow. <laughs> yellow like a yolk. Yeah, and it had little sl- four slits along the bottom. That's exactly it. Yeah. Did everybody have this? We did. Well, I'm all about in terms of trying to keep things, I guess, as minimalist as possible. You know, doubling up on the uses of different things. And one of the tips I saw online was just to use a strainer. Yeah. Just a regular mesh. uh, I've seen people do it just with their hands. Well, yeah, those people are magicians. And crazy. That's like Anthony Bourdain level. Yeah. Uh, But no, just use a regular strainer and you can use that to separate out your eggs. Speaking of Bourdain, we've been binging Hearts Unknown. So if you're having a... It's a bittersweet expedition. But if you're if you're having travel withdrawal during the pandemic, Bourdain's episodes of He's, Parts yeah. Unknown are just phenomenal. What a great way to get that Man, travel just, itch scratched. I, I didn't watch the whole episode because I don't know I was doing something else. But um, you were watching that one where it was like behind the scenes and oh yes, that is just insanely interesting like how hard he was on the people who were making the show but he always he said that he's hard on these people because the show he saw it as his legacy and he wanted it to be better and better and it really was his legacy yeah Yeah. it was interesting because the director said that you couldn't direct him he said he was you think a director tells you what to say but if they even tried to tell him what to say he would just shut them down because he didn't want it to be contrived and scripted and he wanted to use his own words. So the direction really just came (laughs) from everything around him and the environment rather than directing, directing him and his content. Um, tomato paste, tomato paste. If ever you're using tomato paste in a recipe, you've probably been there where you buy, even though they come in these little tiny cans, Yes. you always have excessive waste of tomato paste. You do like what I did there. Waste, yeah, waste, paste. To, yes. To avoid the waste of the paste, what you can do is just spoon out. Um, you know, if you're usually using tablespoon per recipe, you can spoon them out onto a piece of parchment paper and just freeze it, and then pop them into a, a Ziploc bag or Tupperware container, and then you've got your perfectly portioned tomato paste. You're not buying lots of little cans of it's uh, funny paste and then throwing out the waste. And I love this one, but. It's one that we have absolutely, I know, we've never done. <laughs> we've never actually done that one, have we? No. <laughs> yeah. We've not. We're potato waste, <laughs> potato, potato, tomato paste wasters. <laughs> tomato paste wasters. Well, make haste and get that paste <laughs> on not the parchment waste. paper. Uh, if you have giant, we have giant drawers in our kitchen and they are just a free for all. 
you know, th- so Not a lot of people will have drawers that they have a ton of their, maybe their large utensils in their ladles and spatulas and whatnots. <laughs> yeah. And they're all floating around. One way that you can easily organize it without buying something more, uh, is to use bread pans. Yes. Which we've done for years. And that's you can an, also use bread pans to make bread. <laughs> that's, yes, which you never do. And you can make amazing bread. So you should make some bread. I do make great bread, but it is a lot of work. And then we eat way too much bread. because You, ma- you actually made bread like once. I made some pandemic bread. You made some pandemic bread. That's true. Along, along with the rest of the world. Yes. And it wasn't even sourdough. It was my uh, nanny's recipe that she taught me to make. So yeah, uh, yeah it was an awesome bread recipe. And... The idea, though, is just to use bread pans, line, you know, it's it's a fun little game of Tetris, actually, to figure out what configuration they make. I don't know about fun, but you enjoyed it. <laughs> a great uh, One of the great things that fit into them are dishcloths. So if you just, yeah. uh, you know, do an extra fold than the regular dishcloth fold, and you can sort of yeah, and you stack put all them the along. Little utensils like the carrot peeler and all that in the other ones, and then you put like the knife yeah. sharp and they're easy and... to empty out if you do need to make bread but yeah. you can use we have a combination of some cake pans just all different tins that we have and they uh yeah they make great dividers yeah as they an, do. i guess as another tip you can use shoe boxes for the same thing in uh in drawers not and, as permanent though no but i mean in children's drawers if you've got lots of little pairs of socks and t-shirts and things mm-hmm. you can use shoe boxes or other boxes just to divide up uh, those larger drawers and keep them contained baby clothes absolutely uh, keeps everything organized works Makes well a little easier um fr- fried cheese <laughs> oh yes this was one of andre's i love this one he was making an omelet yes and he put cheese in the omelet, and then he well, he put ate cheese. The... He put cheese on top of the omelet, and then he flipped it, <laughs> and then there was a little bit of crispy cheese left on his Crisp... on his spatula. There's nothing more delicious than crispy well, cheese. Well, he ate that cheese, and he said that was so delicious that he decided to fry a great big piece of smoked gouda in the pan. Yes. So there you go. Fried cheese is a delicious kitchen tip. And then, and then our friend Jody was saying, "Oh yeah, well." One of, the th- one of the things that I did, I was making a grilled cheese and I made it regular. You know, you put the cheese in between the two pieces of bread and then you cook one side really well. And then he said he put some cheese down in the uh, frying pan and then cook the other side with the cheese right on top. Yeah, like, like an on inside the outside, out grilled cheese. On the outside of the bread. And he said it was delicious. I think you'd have to have your pan well oiled though to avoid a, a cheesy sticky mess. Yes. A delicious cheesy sticky mess. Yes. If you over salt your food, if you're, uh, you know, making something in a pot, you can just throw in some raw potatoes. Raw potatoes. Do not we'll, eat those potatoes, though. I've been. <laughs> and then pull them warmed. back out. Pull them back out when you're finished. Uh, but you know, just having them in there, boiling for a little bit with whatever you're making. We'll if sop it's up a, a lot soup, of the... it'll sop up the the extra salt. So yeah. you know, it doesn't go to another, waste. Another another tip is if you want it to be more salty, just add some more salt. Yeah, that's a good one. You never disappoint. No. Those are great tips. That's a good one. Uh, feel free to make your own vinaigrette. Yes. Two parts two oil, parts. one part something else. <laughs> Acidic, like, 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 like lemon juice or vinegar. Okay, lemon juice um, or vinegar. So that's sort of your base, but then you can add some of the delicious ingredients suggested. Should raspberries. Suggestions would be, well, I guess raspberries. Um, but Dijon mustard. <laughs> Dijon mustard. Uh, maple syrup. Maple some, syrup. Uh, ground ginger, garlic. Yep. But just, you know, maybe experiment with doing that. Uh, Jeff, it's a great example of something without preservatives. Yes. Again, that's something we've never done. I don't think we've ever made like a vinaigrette like that before. Although you you may have, but I had never had. I have. I've done just the basic oil with uh, balsamic vinegar. Yeah. So you can you can experiment with. Do you ever use vinegars, apple, red wine, apple, apple red, cider vinegar? Apple cider vinegar. Yeah, yeah, and it's supposed to have a lot of mm. other health benefits, whether or not they're true or not. Good to get know. that perfect uh, balance of of uh, salty and sweet. That's you know? true. Well, and I guess one last thing is if if uh, if you really are having a hard time mixing up your natural peanut butter, <laughs> you just you grab a friend, you head to the paint store, you have your friend ask a question of this from the store attendant to distract them, and you just put your peanut butter jar in the paint shaker for just a few minutes. And then that'll take care of the problem. Go to the paint people, ask where the drills are, and get to work. 
<laughs> we got to we got to really thank our friends because I know. we pretty much ripped them off completely out of from our conversation. Well, we gave we full to. credit. That last story is an Andre an Andre, Andre classic. That's and an Andre classic. You know, it's uh, best storyteller I know. Good stories, Andre. There's great there's great kitchen tips online, but like I said, the best ones come from friends and people you know. And why not share kitchen tips with people you know? You know, yeah. have these chats. If and you have some kitchen chip. <laughs> not or chips, kitchen chips. And you want to share your chips. You know what? I've, I've been toying with the idea of making some uh, homemade kitchen chips sometime. But if you have some some uh, tips, definitely pass them our way. And we will maybe, maybe Include share them. Include them in a future episode. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening. It's been fun. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can catch up on past episodes at infoquench.com. Or just about anywhere else you get your podcasts. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And help spread the word about InfoQuench. Till Til next, next time. time.